Chapter 24 Notes, Part 3. Let's review different ways to represent light. We can represent light as a particle called a photon, and we use this in the ray model diagrams for law of reflection and bouncing off mirrors and lenses. We also use it when we're drawing pictures for refraction, but we don't use it to explain refraction. We use Huygens wave fronts to explain interference and diffraction. Huygens was the only one to explain why the light bends when it goes into a different medium and why the interference patterns come up. We can represent light as a wave. We use this to explain the double slit pattern with constructive interference, destructive interference, constructive interference, and so forth. We can also represent light as a three-dimensional wave vibrating in all directions. And a new one that we'll get to in a couple weeks after we've done electricity and magnets is with electric and magnetic fields. Um, light creates a electric field which creates a magnetic field that are perpendicular to each other. And we'll see this drawing later on. Pause and copy. Today we're going to focus on light vibrating in three dimensions. This would be a light photon coming straight at you, and as, it coming at you, as it's coming at you, it's vibrating up and down, it's vibrating from side to side, it's vibrating at a diagonal, it's vibrating at another diagonal, all these ways at the same time. And we call this unpolarized light. Our topic today is about polarization. Polarization is the orientation of the oscillations. It just means what direction is it vibrating in. And we can polarize the light to make it vibrate in just one direction. Now it turns out these other directions that are not in the x and y direction can be represented with x and y components. And we can also represent unpolarized light just with the x and y components. After we put unpolarized light through a polarizing filter, we can polarize it vertically or horizontally. Pause and copy. And copy symbols. Polarization is explained by shaking a rope through boards in a fence. If the boards are going in the same direction you're shaking it, then the light is being polarized in that direction. Here's a video clip showing how the polarizer works. We can see the polarizer is polarized in one direction, and the waves in that same direction will get through the polarizer. Waves in the opposite direction will not pass through. We can also take waves in any random direction, and it's only the x component of those waves that go through the filter. All the y directions are filtered out. This is how we represent it with our polarizing filter. This is unpolarized light, and we're going to represent the unpolarized light with the x and y directions. And when that x and y directions hits the polarizing filter, you can see the x direction is going to be filtered out, and the part that passes through is only in the y direction. So this is polarized light, and this polarizing filter polarizes the light in the vertical direction. The intensity is decreased by one half because we're cutting out half of the light in the x direction. Only the light that vibrates, or only the components that vibrate in the y direction get through. And that makes the light half as bright. Pause and copy. Putting two polarizers together changes the intensity. If we have two fences in a row, we can still get the rope to vibrate in that one direction. Just like in a polarizing filter, if they're both lined up in the same orientation, then the light is still polarized in that direction. However, if we turn the filters 90 degrees to each other, all of the light will be blocked out. Right. Here's a video clip showing two polarized lenses. Currently, they're facing the same direction, so they're the same orientation. But when we rotate them 90 degrees, it blocks all the light out. So our animations are showing if we turn them 90 degrees to each other, no light will get through. So if we turn them to an angle, you saw it got dimmer and dimmer. Um, we use components to figure out how this works. So I'm going to take my polarized light and shine it onto another polarized filter at an angle. And we'll zoom in so you can see what's happening. 
This polarized light is at an angle to this polarizer, so it has an X and Y component. And you can see the X component's going to cancel out, and the Y component is the one that makes it through the filter. So putting the two filters in a row, this is the direction of the orientation of the light that gets through. The intensity of this light that comes through the second filter is cosine squared of the angle between the two filters. So original intensity was I naught. The intensity after the first filter is one half I naught because half of the light is being filtered out. And then the intensity through the second filter is a cosine squared times the intensity that it was getting hit with. Pause and copy. Light that reflects off a non-metallic surface also gets polarized parallel to the surface. This is what polarized sunglasses are for, to reduce the glare of that light that's being polarized in that orientation. Example over here, the sunlight from the sky is being reflected off of the pond, and with the polarizer, we can see more into the pond, less of this light is being reflected towards us. The pond polarizes the light in the X direction, and so our sunglasses are polarized in the Y direction to help cancel that out. Pause and copy.